Now I've got another pattern for you today that was kind of inspired by me attending the International Fly Tying Symposium a couple of weeks ago. One of the booths I visited was Done and Done Fine Art Prints, and I talked with Ryan and James for a little while while just admiring some of their great work. And I'm always on the lookout for some cool new stuff to put on the wall behind me, so I just had to pick up one of their prints. And I purposely picked out one of a fly that I haven't tied for the channel just so I could talk about them while I'm making this video. And some of y'all might recognize a pattern on that new frame print behind me. Yep, it's a Latorte Cricket. I haven't tied one of these things in years, and never for the channel. Now it's not a terribly difficult pattern to tie, certainly no harder than the Latorte Hopper, but it is kind of a hard pattern to make look really good. The one you saw in the thumbnail was not perfect, and the one you're about to watch me tie certainly isn't perfect either, but the good thing is the fish don't really care. If you can get roughly the right size and the right proportions, and you don't close up your hook gap and you can still get your tippet through the eye, well, you've got a fishable fly. Now, one thing I did not do, which looking back, I probably should have, is put a little bit of head cement or maybe some Sally Hansen on the turkey slip before tying it in for the wing. That will, you know, make it look better at least at the beginning, but after a few fish, the thing's gonna be pretty chewed up anyway. One last plug before tying this thing. If you're looking for some cool fly tying art, check out Done and Done. I'll link to them in the description. Just two pretty good guys and really have some beautiful work. So there it is in the vise, a Latorte Cricket. Now, not a very elegant pattern, but you know, depending on how much time you wanna spend on spinning this deer hair, it's not that difficult of a tie. Now I'm tying this on a size 10, it's one extra long dry fly hook. And I am stepping my thread up to a 140 denier in black. I'll catch it in about midway. Take it back to the start of the bend. And I'm using a thicker thread because, you know, we are sort of spinning deer hair at the end. So let's get some wax on it. And you'll want to dub a black body with some kind of fur. This is rabbit, but a synthetic would be just fine. Whatever you want to use for floating dry flies. And we're only going to dub it to maybe a little bit forward of halfway. Okay, I think that'll be fine right there. Next thing I want to catch in is a dark slip of turkey, or you could use duck or goose. And it's not very wide. It's not even a hook gap. I want to just lay it in right there on top, not really tent style, but sort of. So we'll just do a couple of loose wraps right here. And it's probably gonna split up on you. Mine usually do split up before I'm even done, but you know, that's okay. It's probably gonna do that when you're fishing it anyway. So after you get that caught in, go ahead and snip the front piece of this right here. Take a couple extra wraps just to smooth this area down, but leave our thread right here in the back we're gonna catch in the next part, which is just a black deer body hair. And this is a small to medium sized tuft right here. If you've got one of these combs to take out your under fur, yeah, go ahead and use that. If not, just do the best you can with your fingers. Probably won't get it all out anyway. So after you get the under fur cleaned out the best you can, go ahead and put it in your stacker for a bit. Let's see if that stacked okay. I think it's just fine. And let's catch this in maybe to the bend of the hook. It's gonna be a, end up being a little bit shorter than that underwing. So I'll go about right there. And I'm pinching the, the hair and the hook at the same time while I put these first couple of wraps. I don't want this hair toward the back to really be spinning around. I don't mind if it does on front. Up front, and kind of want it to up front actually. So we'll go ahead and just spread this out, put a few wraps up in between it. You can see I've got a lot of under fur in here, even though I did comb it out. So maybe I've just got a, not a real high quality batch of deer hair here. But go ahead and push it back a little bit. Leave your thread up front. Take another clump of the same deer body hair. Now this one, I also tried to remove that under fur, but I also snipped the, the tips of it off. So I've got two kind of uh, flat, you know, ends of it. I'm gonna lay it on maybe a 30 degree angle pointed toward me. One loose wrap, and then before I let go, the second wrap just a little bit tighter, and then the third and fourth wraps tighter yet until it stops spinning. Now we'll just zigzag this 
thread up through this piece right here. Now this is probably enough. Now if you've spun a lot of deer hair, you'll know that we could really pack this in right here and probably even spin another, another clump of it. But I'm not gonna do that because you don't want a huge head on this thing, just enough to really give it the profile you want and then help with the floatability. So I'm just gonna push it back a little bit and go ahead and whip finish it. And I definitely trapped at least one fiber going forward there, but we'll be okay. We can just trim this one out before we work on our trimming the rest of this fly here. Now, one thing I like to do, just you're gonna to try to separate this, you know, the wing in the back, which is just those tips from all the spun deer hair. And then if you can separate it enough, like this right here, this is kind of tricky and this is what takes the longest part of this fly. I'll just kind of grab it and pinch the wing right there and now just pull everything forward. And this is the part that we got to spend some time trimming. Now, if you've got one of these things, a razor blade holder or just a razor blade, it might make it a little bit easier. Just be careful you don't go too far and, you know, cut your fingers or snip off the back of that, um, you know, your wing right there. So what I will often do is just do a lot of it with this, the bulk of it maybe, but sculpt it with my scissors. Now you could just do the whole thing with your scissors if you wanted. It might take just a little bit longer, but you do a lot of snipping and blowing right here until you can get the shape of the head you want. Now I'll speed this up so you don't have to watch in real time. It's probably gonna take me a couple of minutes to get this trim to, to what I want. And one thing to note, you want it shorter on the bottom. So you want this thing to really kind of sit down in the surface film, and you also don't really want to close off that hook gap. So just bear with me right here and take your time snipping this to you get the shape of the head you want. All right, now here's one tip. I think this head is about close enough to what I want. You can see that that wing is already split up on me and that happens just about all the time, whether you're using a turkey or a duck, just trim it to size and hope for the best. But one thing, you know, when doing this or the Latorte Hopper, I don't spend a lot of time worrying about how pretty that head is. As long as I can get my tip it up through that eye and I think this thing's gonna float, you got a fishable fly. Now this one is a little shaggy, so I might spend a little bit more time just cleaning up this fuzz, this under fur, but again, it's probably not a big deal, and I'll bet you the fish don't care the least bit. So there you go, all the steps for tying the Latorte Cricket. Not a tough pattern, but you know, it's kind of challenging to make it look perfect. What you're seeing right here is certainly not a perfect one, but I think it'll fish. So I appreciate you watching everybody. Y'all take care and we'll see you next time.